Hey guys, it's Savannah and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys how you can make cute, affordable home decor using your Cricut and also items from the Dollar Tree. So let's go ahead and jump into our first craft. All right, so for our first DIY using our Cricut, um, I am going to be taking this Valentine's Day truck. It is from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to try to like cut the hearts off the back because I just wanted the truck itself. So I did just take like my Cricut, um, I don't know, what are these called? Cutting knives, score or whatever, cutting knives, and I just tried to score the back of it. Um, and this did work fairly well, but I, <laughs> I had a hard time like going in a straight line with just my hand. So I did play something that had a straight edge there. You could do a ruler, you could do whatever. I just had a popsicle stick next to me. So that's what I used and I laid it there. And then once I kind of got my line, I just took some scissors and kind of scored it even more like harder. And then I did it on the other side and then just kind of wiggled it back and forth until I could get those hearts to kind of just pop off. Then I am just taking some paint by Dixie Belle in the color Drop Cloth, and I am just gonna give this truck just a light coat. I like, you know, a little bit of that wood showing through, but I did want it to be lighter and look, you know, a little farmhouse day, farmhouse stick, <laughs> farmhouse and rustic. So I did just do one coat and I did just dry brush it. If the back bothers you, by all means, you can cover that too. And then I'm taking one of these spindles and I'm going to use it upside down. But at first I want this spindle to look rustic and worn as well. So I'm just taking my little finger sander and I'm sanding down the spindle until I get it how I like it. And the thick part at the top is where I'm going to attach the truck essentially, but these are super cheap. I actually had Megan give these to me from the Crafty Quinn, but you can get these from Lowe's, any like thrift store, you can find these everywhere. Then I'm just taking a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I'm not really sure if this served a purpose or not. Um, and I'm just taking some ink Waverly chalk paint and kind of just like going over where the tires would be, where the window would be. And I don't know, I just kind of wanted to give that um, definition to the truck as well. Then once I'm done with this part, I'm just gonna go in with my little chippy brush and kind of just feather out on the sides, kind of blend in the black where I put some of that black at in the middle and just kind of play around with it until I get it how I like it. All right, I've showed you guys a few times how you can use the Cricut Design Studio on your phone, which I find so convenient instead of having to get your computer out, hook it up. I love that you can just pull your phone out and you know, pick what you want and have it printed out right there. Um, so for this, I just went into my design space. I hit insert font or text, and I just picked a font that I liked. I love all the DTC ones. Um, and I just love the way this looks. Now, if you're on your computer, the one thing that you can't do from your phone, or at least I haven't figured it out yet, is how to connect your words. So that is something that you would have to do from your computer. But then once I got the size that I wanted, I am just gonna print that out and take it upstairs to my craft room. Once you've printed this out on your Cricut, um, so I did, I have learned how to connect my letters, but I just didn't at this time because I kind of liked them spread out, to be honest, but um, you can definitely connect them if you do it from like your computer, but I'm just going in and I'm weeding out all the vinyl that needs to come out, and I am then going to take my transfer tape, lay it on top of it, pull it off, and then I'm going to lay that on the truck, and then I'm making sure it's straight, and then I'm going to take my little Cricut um, shovel thing <laughs> and kind of just rub on it until, you know, just to make sure it's all laid down like pretty good and it's not coming up. And then I'm going to remove the transfer tape. And then because I'm going to put this outside, I did want to put a little coat of Mod Podge all over the truck just to make sure that my vinyl didn't come off in the heat or like the water or anything like that. So I did just take some Mod Podge from Dollar Tree, you know, sprinkled it on there and then I just took a little sponge um thing I don't know brush whatever you'd like to use for your Mod Podge I honestly use whatever's closest to me and I'm kind of just rubbing that in especially on the words 
just because I don't want them to come off and, you know, because it's going to be on my front porch. And then if you've been with me for a while, you know I like to make cute little expos and then take some raffia. And I just take one strand and I kind of just take it and just, you know, wrap it around until I got almost like a bow look until the raffia is all gone. And then I will put it in the middle and then I'm taking some of this little, I don't know, polka dot ribbon from Walmart. It was like $2. And I'm going to put that on top of the raffia. And then I'm going to take some jute and cinch the bow, cut the excess off. And then I'm going to hot glue this to the truck. Now, if you are going to have this outside, I maybe would recommend putting something like super glue just because of the heat and stuff. Um, and then I do hot glue it to the spindle, but after I do have it out in my like little, um, vases for a while outside, I do go back in and add a little screw under that bow. Can't even see it, but it definitely keeps it from falling off. And I love this, you guys, it is still on my front porch to this day. <laughs> and I think it's so cute. It's definitely, I don't know. I love it. So let me know what you guys think. I just want to take a second and thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I genuinely love all their products. If you're thinking about getting a Cricut, this is your sign. You definitely need to get one. You can use them for everything, not just for crafting, and it's definitely worth the investment. I love my Cricut. At first, I felt like I would be super overwhelmed, but their design space and their design studio is set up to help people so much like it's super helpful if you forget a step it reminds you so anyways let's get back into the cute crafts using your Cricut but I just wanted to thank them for sponsoring today's video if you guys saw my last thrift flip video you saw the mail organizer that has fallen apart on me but I loved the front of it so I wanted to keep those pieces and this is one of those pieces I love the blue love the design love the wood love it all so i am going to make a little piece with this so i'm just taking some of that dixie bell that was still in the brush from the truck adding a little bit more and i kind of want to tone down this blue not too much i still want it to show through but i definitely did not want it as dark as it would like it was because you'll see why in a little bit then I'm just taking some antique Waverly wax and a baby wipe and I'm kind of just staining the wood around it because I wanted that to be a little bit darker and stand out a little bit more. So that's pretty simple. I mean, I probably should have done this first because I did get it a little bit on, you know, that part, the white part and the blue part, but I just took a baby wipe and rubbed it off and it honestly just looked like it was distressed. So it ended up working out fine. Next, I also printed this off on my Cricut. It just says 2525 in the same font, the beach. I think it's DTC beach something. Um, and instead of like using transfer tape and transferring it because it was too spaced out, I am just taking them off one by one and laying them on, um, you know, on this piece. Now, this is, you know, obviously the number of my house. Don't stalk me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I thought this would be really cute to just put like on the side of the house um, by our door. So that's what we're going to do with this. So I just try to lay them out as straight as I can get them. And then I am also going to cover this in Mod Podge just because it's going to be outside and I don't want the vinyl to come up or rain, you know, just because, right? And then that is it for this one, but I did want to show you, I thought about putting these half beads around it, but I just really liked the dark of the wood. I think if I was going to use these, I would maybe stain these as well, just to give the, you know, the frame some texture, but I did just want to show this to give you guys another idea. I also think this would be really cute in your house with like your zip code on it. So there's so many options there, but yeah, that's it.
If you're new to my channel, I'm Savannah and I love doing Dollar Tree DIYs and thrift flips. Honestly, any DIY that can save this girl a buck. So if that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button. Also, follow me over on Instagram at Savvy Crafts with Savannah. That's where I feel like I can be a little bit more personal with you guys and talk a little bit outside of YouTube. Also, if you would like to support my channel, there is a link in my description box. But another way to support my channel is liking, commenting, sharing all of my videos. It really does mean so much to me. I love all my subscribers so much. I feel like I know you guys. <laughs> it's so crazy. We've never met, but I honestly feel like I know you guys and I cannot thank you guys enough. All right, moving on. You're gonna need three of these long wood signs from the Dollar Tree. Now, technically you probably don't need three. You could probably get away with two. And then I just cut them into three halves. I didn't really measure. I just cut them until I got three sizes that I liked that would look cute on top of each other. And then I cut them down. And then I'm letting Addie pick out a color and she picked Celery by Waverly. And so we're gonna start painting these. I painted the bottom and the top one in the color drop cloth by Dixie Belle. And then Addison painted the middle one with the celery, celery Waverly chalk paint. And we did have to do a couple coats on the front of these just because of the words and the black, it kept showing through. So we would paint, dry it, paint, dry it until we got it how we liked it. And then one, one coat on the sides and the back was plenty just because it was white and there was really nothing to cover up. Once these were fully painted and dried, we are then gonna go in and distress it with our chip brush and some antique Waverly wax. So I was kind of nervous about letting Addison distress because <laughs> honestly, I don't know why I was so nervous because you really can't mess up when you're distressing. It all looks like it's supposed to be there in some sort of way, but I'm trying to teach her how to just kind of feather out on the edges and then kind of dry brush in the middle. And she actually ended up doing a great job. Like I love how hers turned out. So she is a little DIYer in the making. This was so much fun to do. And this project is one of my favorites from today. It just turns out so cute. And it's just, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites and it will be in my house for years to come. So next I printed this saying off on my Cricut. It says the greatest is love. This is in the Bible in 1 Corinthians and it's also in a really good Alan Jackson song. Um, and I just love this saying and I thought it was gonna be really cute on these. So I let Addison weed out the parts and then we are laying them on the blocks. So there's really no rhyme or reason to this. <laughs> I just, um, you know, just laid these out. I don't even know why I'm saying this, but you know, pretty simple. Again, I always say this, but if you don't have a Cricut, you don't need one. And this turns out so stinking cute. I just, I love it. I, because I struggle with transfer tape, I didn't really want to, you know, let Addison do too much of this because I didn't want her to rip the words, but she did help me, you know, rub them in wherever that I can't find that scraper thing from Cricut. I have no idea where it's at. And so, yeah, so we just did that. And then I let her pull off the transfer tape. Next, Addison is just taking that brush that had the drop cloth color on it and just dry brushing over the words because this vinyl is not matte. It's actually shiny and your girl does not like that. So I was trying to tone it down a little bit and that definitely did work. Then I'm just laying a bead of hot glue on the top of the bottom one, letting Addison place the middle block there. And then I lay some more hot glue on top of that one and let her place the top block on top of that pretty simple. And again, you guys, you have to let me know what you guys think about this. I don't know. I was really proud of this one. I loved it. I felt like this looked like something you would buy in the store. And then of course, because I always have to add something else, we're going to add just a little extra detail to it in a second. So this is what I was talking about. I had an extra one of these, I don't know what you would call them, drawer pulls, handles, that I got from Walmart in a pack of two. It was like a bronze color, so I did spray paint it in some matte black. And then I just placed some hot glue on the bottom of it. Now, I would recommend using super glue if you don't want it to go anywhere. And then I let Addison place it, and I just felt like this 
gave it just an extra little touch and just added I don't know it just really pulled this piece all together for me and I think this is gonna be so cute honestly anywhere in your house so let me know what you guys think All right, for this next one, you're gonna need a spindle of some sort. You can find these at thrift stores. Habitat for Humanity has a lot. Um, and then a Dollar Tree sign. This is one of their spring signs, but honestly, any of their long signs will work or whatever kind of sign you wanna use. So I was kind of just looking at it, laying it out next to the spindle and seeing where I wanted to cut it. And then I cut that and then I am gonna cut the spindle down. Now, shout out to Megan from the Crafty Quinn because she gave me like four spindles and I was so excited to use them. And this is my first project with the spindle. So I'm taking a screw and I am going to screw it in the bottom of this little wood round. Now, these are from Hobby Lobby, but sometimes you can find these at Dollar Tree. I would just assume buy them at Hobby Lobby because I think you can get like a pack of four for five bucks and then let's say 50% off versus buying each individual one from Dollar Tree. So I screwed that into the bottom of the little wood round and then into the spindle. And then I'm kind of just measuring out the middle because I'm gonna drill this sign onto the spindle, like with some screws, not drill it, that didn't make sense. But you know what I mean. Now you guys, I don't, I, I like to think I'm a pretty humble person. I do love all the DIYs that I do, but you guys, these DIYs in this video are probably some of my favorite that I've ever done on my channel. So I cannot wait to show you guys. So then I'm taking this kind of like antique, I don't even know what you would call this, um, but this is from Hobby Lobby. It was like two bucks and I want to put this at the bottom of this little sign. And at first I kind of played with the position, but I did want to cover up that screw at the bottom and I didn't really care if it was raised just a little bit. Then we're just gonna go in with some plain white Waverly chalk paint. I finally got to say that. Every time I use the color ivory, I always wanna say white, but it's not white, it's ivory. So I finally get to say white Waverly chalk paint. And I'm just covering this whole sign. I didn't have to worry about the spindle. I thought I was gonna have to paint that um, as well, but the white really did just blend in with that. And I kinda liked how it looked old anyway, the spindle, like some of the wood was showing through. So I really didn't have to mess with that. Now I'm just making sure I get like in the nooks and crannies of that little thing, um, the little decorative piece, but I didn't mind if like some of that wood still showed through. I liked that. And then I also paint the back of this. You guys know sometimes I don't worry about the back, especially if it's hanging on a wall and you're not gonna see it. But this is gonna be freestanding, so I wanted to make sure that the back was covered as well. So I do give that a good, a good coat of the Waverly chalk paint as well. And then I just paint this little wood round as well because I want this all to be like white and all blend in together. I'm sure you guys, I mean, that's pretty obvious, but you can see I painted the back as well. And I love the, that little decorative piece. I feel like it adds so much character to this piece and I'm definitely gonna have to go get some more of those. Then we're gonna take some of our antique Waverly Wax and our chip brush, and we are gonna distress this. Now, a lot of you guys ask where I get my chip brushes from. Actually, a subscriber, Rochelle, she sends them to me. Shout out, girl. <laughs> um, but I get them from plaid.com, but I believe that they are sold out, or I'm not sure if they're carrying them anymore, which is super sad, because I love these. But if you guys follow Melissa from All Things Crafty, she's one of my good friends on here. Uh, in her Amazon store, she has a link to a small chip brush. I think it's by Folk Art, and she swears by it. She loves it. She says it's the closest thing to one of these, so you guys can go check that out or just go on Amazon and type in mini chip brush and just try it out. I mean, you never know. So I then am going down to the wood round and just distressing, trying to pull out some more dimension, especially where those like edges are. I really want that to pop out and, you know, just add a little bit more, 
I don't know, contrast to this project. And then we are going to start distressing the face. Now, I really don't have a technique for distressing. I just go on the sides and sometimes I will go in the middle, but I don't go in the middle for this project just because you'll see why in a second. So I just focus on the edges and then that decorative piece, just getting it to a rustic farmhouse look and get it how I like it, you know? Then I just printed this out on my Cricut. It's an N and then it says Nicholas family established 2017. And if you didn't know, Nicholas is my last name. So I was going to try to do them all at once, but it was too long and it wasn't fitting. So I did have, have to separate all of them and then lay them down. Someone asked me if you can use your phone when you're working with your Cricut. And the answer is yes. That's all I use. I use my phone for everything on my Cricut. Um, then I'm just going to start laying this vinyl down, just playing with like the space and how I want it to all lay. I do the big N at the top and the Nicholas and then family. I just chose different fonts. I just go through and find it until I pick a font that I like. And I think actually every one of these is a different font. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just laying all this out and getting it how I like it and then removing the transfer tape. And then again, if you are new here, I like to sand over my vinyl, especially if I'm making a rustic piece. So I do that just to kind of tone down that black. Then I'm taking one of these little knobs from Hobby Lobby. I used this in a couple videos ago on my apothecary cabinet, and these are fairly cheap. I mean, they're not expensive at all, and I love them. So I did want to, I, okay, anyways, I like completely missed that point. So I hot glued that to the top and then painted it and distressed it. And then I felt like it was still missing something after I added that. So I was going to add this greenery. I left this in here just to give you guys another idea. I just took some greenery and I put it all together and made a cute little swag. And then I added a button, but after I didn't really like it, I kind of liked it just plain, but I did want to leave it in so you guys could see what it looked like. And it's your choice on what you guys want to do. I love this project. So let me know what you guys think. I absolutely adore this next one. You're going to need three of these little picture frames from the Dollar Tree. Now I have two new ones and then I'm going to be using one that I've already used. So I just started by removing all the plastic and then taking everything out of the frames and um, removing those words that are like on top of there. Now you can try to save them, but I just, I've tried and I just have no luck. They are just very thin and trust me when I say they're not savable. <laughs> I tried really hard. So then I'm just lining these all up and I'm removing the little hangers from the back of two in case I do want to hang this. So I leave the top gold hanger in and then I remove the two bottom ones. Now, while my hot glue gun is heating up, I am taking some ivory Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint the back of all of these little things, you know, the frames that go inside of it. And I want them all to be, you know, white, but a little bit distressed. So not a full, full coat. Then while those are drying, we are going to glue all of our frames together. Now you could do this a few different ways. I actually saw a Kirkland's inspiration picture um, I'll insert it here, kind of where I drew my inspiration from. You could do these like vertical or horizontal. I think it would be cute either way. I'm going to insert the picture. So I saw this on their website, the Kirkland's website, or honestly, maybe Pinterest. I'm not sure. And I thought it was so cute. So this is what I'm saying by you could go vertically, but I decided to go like horizontally. So I'm hot gluing all of these frames together and making sure that they're even and they're flush and kind of just holding them until I'm, you know, until I know that they're stuck together. <laughs> Then I'm going in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss. Now I am obsessed with this color. I love this color. You know, I liked the inspiration picture. I loved kind of like the milky 
chalk white distress look but I don't know I kind of wanted to put my own spin on it so I decided to go with this color and again I'm obsessed with it I used this in my last thrift flip video and I just wanted to get my hands on it just a little bit more so I'm just taking it and I'm painting the whole frame except for the back I just get the insides anywhere that's going to be seen I painted then I'm just taking some of that, that same brush that I used to paint the wood pieces and I'm kind of just dry brushing over the green just to add a little bit more dimension and you know bring some colors out. I always like if I'm using a dark base coat, I like distressing with a light color and then I like to go in with my antique wax and distress with a darker color. Then I printed this saying out on my Cricut. Now this wasn't in the design space. I just picked some font that I liked and made the home match and then did sweet in a different font. Now, if you're new here, I like to sand over my vinyl, especially when I'm using black, just to kind of tone it down and bring the whole piece together. Now, if you don't, again, if you don't have a Cricut, there are so many other options. You do not have to have a Cricut to do this project. Walmart has stickers, Dollar Tree has stickers. There are so many other options. So don't feel like you need a Cricut to do this. Now, I that's pretty much it for this. I love how this turned out. I have this sitting on our little shoe rack in our entryway and I think it turned out so cute. So let me know what you guys think. All right, this next DIY is super, super simple. I am taking one of these Dollar Tree flower holder pots, metal things, <laughs> whatever they are, and some antique Waverly wax and a chip brush. And I'm just going through and trying to distress the edges a little bit over the face of these. I'm trying to make this look like an old rusted tin piece, if you will. So that's what I'm just doing here. I focus a lot on like the corners and the top pieces, anywhere that things would normally rust. Then I printed out this cute little design that was in the Cricut design space. I thought it was adorable, but I just didn't like the little things at the top. So I did cut those off. And then I am just gonna place that at the top of this little can. Again, you guys, I don't feel like I have to say this every time, but if you do not have a Cricut, there's, you can still do this, you know? I think sometimes people are like, oh, I can't do that, I don't have a Cricut. Yes, you can, girlfriend or boyfriend. Just go buy some letters. Dollar Tree has some really cute rub-on stickers. There are just so many other options. Or if you're really good at writing using a paint pen, that would be super easy. But that is pretty much it for this DIY. I just laid this vinyl over there and obviously pulled the transfer tape off, which again, I'm still having so much trouble with. Um, some of my subscribers asked if I stick it on my shirt before. I do. I don't know, it just does not like me. And that is it. So let me know what you guys think about this one. And then for our next one, one of these Easter cutting board decors. Shout out to Melissa from All Things Crafty. I was not able to find these anywhere around me. So she actually snagged two for me and mailed them to me. So thanks girl. If you guys aren't following her, definitely go check her out. That's Melissa, All Things Crafty. <laughs> so I just started by removing the front of this and then those little like thumbtacks and I found it pretty easy to remove those. Then this is where we get into some prints, but I got this scrapbook paper book from Hobby Lobby when I was up at my in-laws. Me and Megan from the Crafty Quinn, we actually finally got to meet up and we went on a little shopping spree at Hobby Lobby. But I just loved all the patterns in here. And I am I end up going with that yellow stripe paper, but I changed my mind because I wanted this to last kind of all year. I wanted to be able to keep this all year. And I felt like that yellow was more of like a summery color. So then I am going to paint the back of this with some ivory Waverly chalk paint. Again, just a good, like, um, you know, one coat. It's okay if some of that wood's showing through. I love it. If you don't, then by all means, cover the whole thing. 
Then this is where you can see that I decided to change the print pattern that I chose. And I decided to go with this kind of like flowery, I don't know, it just looked very like vintage and shabby chic to me. So I ended up hot gluing that on top of there. I just don't like using Mod Podge sometimes with paper because there's just bubbles. And I think it looks just as good when you hot glue it. Then I like taking my sander and just sanding the edges. So if it is a little bit over, I can go through and get all that excess paper off. That way I have like a cream, a cream, a clean, crisp, you know, line on where the edges are. Then we're gonna go back in and start just stressing. So I am taking some antique Waverly wax and my chip brush, shocker, and I'm just distressing this whole um, cutting board. Now, obviously this is not a cutting board, okay? So don't be, don't go cutting things in your kitchen on this and be like, well, Savannah made a cutting board. No girl, I did not. This is decor purposes only, okay? <laughs> I do not recommend using this to cut anything or put any kind of food on. Anyways, I don't even know why I said that, but I'm just going through and just distressing this whole thing because I want this to look kind of vintage, shabby, chic, farmhouse, all at the same time. And then I'm also going to lightly distress um, the raised part of this cutting board as well, just because the colors are kind of neutral and they almost blend in but i kind of want this to pop out just a little bit so i just did the edges and then i lightly dry brushed over the top then i printed this out on my cricut it is in the design studio if you guys have that it's free no well the design studio isn't but this image is if you pay for the design studio <laughs> Better get that right. Um, so I just laid this on the middle. I thought it was so cute. It says farm fresh. And then it has a little piggy, a rooster, and a cow. I thought it was so adorable. So I just put this on the center of this. And then if you're new here, I like to just sand a little bit over my black vinyl, especially if I'm making something farmhouse, just to kind of dull down that black just a little bit and it kind of make it look more worn. So then we are going to hot glue this to the center of our cutting board. Super self-explanatory. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, pretty much it. <laughs> Then I was gonna go back in and just put those little silver thumbtacks back in where they were, but I just felt like they didn't really blend in with what I had going on now. So I took some more of those little furniture button plugs or whatever these are called. I got them from Hobby Lobby. I think they were like $2.49 and then 50% off. So I just put those on the corner of there and I just felt like the wood really went well with this whole project. I'm actually in love with this whole project. I really love everything that I did today. I just love patterns. I love colors, you know, little pops and, but toned down a little bit. Like this is, this has got something crazy going on, but it's very toned down. So then I'm just taking some of this ribbon from Hobby Lobby and some ribbon from Dollar Tree. And then you guys know some raffia and a piece of jute and I am cinching this bow together. I didn't do an X bow. I just laid them all, you know, like on top of each other and staggered, not staggered, you know what I mean. And then I used the extra jute and tied it around the handle and then hot glued the back of it just so that it wouldn't move anywhere. And then I fluffed the raffia out and then I just wanted to add something else because I'm just a little extra. You saw in my last video, I found these little flowers and I think this is so cute, you guys. Oh my gosh, I am in love with this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you made it all the way to the end, leave a black emoji. I also want to thank Cricut again for sponsoring today's video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.